so this is um, a paper uh, published in KDD 2005. Okay. Um, uh, so just a quick, uh, just few words on anomalies actually, or outliers. Uh, so for this paper, they use both words as synonyms. So anomalies are uh, considered in this paper to be rare events, uh, things that we don't observe uh, uh, very often. Uh, so in this particular example, we have this uh, signal over time, and then we see here a peak of a higher value than usual, uh, which is then considered as an anomaly. Uh, another possible representation is um, uh, given on the right, where we have um, a set of points uh, some of which can be grouped into dense clusters and uh, the blue points and set of other points which are considered to be noise, which are relatively far from uh, the different dense regions in our input space. Um, so example of anomalies could be like abnormal pixels. Um, those are, for example, uh, the pixels that may uh, represent maybe due to uh, some cancer, for example, in medical images, uh, fraudulent transactions, and apparently even purchases on e-commerce websites are considered to be anomalies because they don't happen that often as compared to the number of people who browse a website and the number of people who purchase uh, uh, is actually very small, uh, etc. So uh, anomalies doesn't necessarily mean something negative as well. Uh, so, in this paper, is more about something that uh, doesn't happen very frequently or rare events. Okay, uh, so uh, I will start by uh, giving an intuition about um, the approach which is being developed in this paper. Um, so, here consider that we have some data sets, and the picture that you see here. Uh, uh, on the top left corner is a project a projection of our data into uh, a two dimensional uh, space actually so originally the data is in a higher dimensional space it means like we have more than two features and we see here like when we project uh, our data points to a two dimensional space uh, we don't clearly see we don't we don't clearly see any uh, outliers here or at least it's hard to say if uh, some of the points here is an outlier. But if we project into another uh, feature space, uh, uh, we can clearly see that here point B seems to be uh, an outlier in this uh, new feature space. Now, we can also find another feature space where this time A is actually uh, an outlier uh, as compared to the other set of points. And finally, uh, we can find another sub feature space where actually both on points A and B can somehow be uh, considered as outliers. So, um, uh, starting from this observation and intuition that not all features actually may be important uh, to detect or to identify the outliers, uh, so the authors wanted to develop an approach that uses uh, some feature subsampling uh, while trying to learn to identify. Uh, outliers. Uh, so their intuition is that uh, some of the features may be noisy actually and may not contribute to identify the outliers. Uh, so they try to find a way to overcome this difficulty. Now this is also interesting because Andrew in his paper um, mentioned that one of the key challenges that uh, the DevNet authors were trying to tackle was the problem of high dimensionality uh, and curse of dimensionality. Uh, so in this paper, they tried to tackle it in a different way, and they tried to introduce nonlinearities as well, uh, which was important in, in the DevNet paper uh, in a different way as well. Now, the approach is actually very simple, and what it does, it actually performs some feature bagging, uh, uh, and then uh, the idea is that you have some input data. Uh, let's say here objects are rows. It means X1 to X4, and then we have six features. Now, the idea is that we create uh, multiple uh, data sets, actually, where each time we sample uh, a number of feature, uh, which is actually uh, inspired from uh, the bagging approach, which is usually applied to objects, but here used with features. Now, how do they perform the sampling, actually? 
uh, first they will uh, pick a number of features to sample. So you see here, for example, uh, for the top uh, uh, for the top data set that we have created, we only retain feature one, uh, feature two, and feature six. Uh, for the subsequent data set, we retain four features, uh, one, three, five, and six. It means like the number of features from one uh, sample to another actually may be different. Now, the way they proceed here is just by randomly, actually. Uh, but they first sample actually a number of features, which must be uh, between half of the size of the features. So here, like between three and six, uh, uh, between three and five, sorry. Uh, they cannot use all the features uh, at a time. And they guarantee that they use at least half of the available features. Now, once they have uh, sampled the number, then they just pick features at random. If let's say here, they pick three at random for the very first case, then uh, uh, they select three features at random. For the second case, they pick number four at random, and then they selected four features, uh, one, three, uh, five, and six. And then, uh, as you may have guessed, the objective is then to run uh, an anomaly detection algorithm on every uh, data set that we have created, actually. Uh, so the idea is that um, you take some algorithm that can score, actually, the data object uh, based on how likely they are outliers, and then we perform this algorithm on the different data sets. Uh, so every time, every algorithm will be exposed or, or will work uh, based, actually, using different features, actually. Uh, now, once we have uh, completed these steps, we end up like for this particular example where we have created two uh, subsamples of our uh, data set, two subsets. Uh, we end up with two scores uh, by the two algorithms, meaning like, so the algorithm can be actually the same. And in the paper, they use only one algorithm that I will talk about uh, just after this. And then they have actually multiple scores. So it's basically an ensemble method. And the objective then will be to combine uh, the scores actually uh, to come up with a final score uh, for every data object. So at the end for every object, we will have the score. And then this score tell us uh, how likely is this an outlier or the degree to which this point may be an outlier. So the highest the number or the highest the score, the more likely uh, our data point or our data record to be an outlier. Okay, so just quickly on the method they use actually to perform the uh, uh, data point scoring is called a loop, a local outlier factor. Um, so the principle of this approach is actually to uh, uh, assign a score to every data point and the score is relative to the density around every point. Uh, so if you look at of some point here, uh, uh, for example, the one with the bigger circle, uh, they are uh, uh, their neighborhood actually is much more sparser. Uh, they are not in dense areas, so they receive high score. It means like uh, uh, there is a high chance that they are outliers. Whereas like for points with the small circles that are located in dense area, where the neighborhood is pretty dense and close, then the points receive a relatively low score because they are less likely to represent outliers. So this is the method uh, that the author used to come up with the scoring uh, for every of the data uh, subsets they come up with. Um, now, of course, any other kind of algorithm that can score points uh, based on uh, how likely they represent outliers can be used here, actually. Uh, now, so uh, the next step, once we have the scores, is actually to combine them, to combine the scores to come up with a final uh, response or answer for every data record. Uh, so the author here used two approaches. The first one they call the breathe first approach. Uh, so the idea is that uh, algorithm one will provide scores for all data records, so they will sort them in decreasing order here, meaning like AS11 is the highest uh, score. Now, e each of these score corresponds actually to one of the data points. Uh, now, they do the same. They rank the second column and they rank uh, column T, actually. Uh, all the scores will be ranked. Then they just perform uh, some kind of uh, uh, breathe, um, 
uh, th they visit all the elements of this matrix in a breathe first approach. So here, for example, as you can see the red um, uh, path here, uh, we would start to read uh, uh, from uh, the top uh, left corner, uh, AS11, then we, uh, we actually uh, follow uh, the, uh, the red path. And every time uh, we encounter uh, a score, actually, we identify which data points correspond to this score. So we have a mapping, actually. So for example, let's say AS11 correspond to item X3. So this item X3 then would be considered as the most likely point to be, uh, uh, as the point which is mo uh, that has the highest score to be an outlier actually, which is the most likely to be an outlier. Then the second point would be AS21, the third point will be AST1, and then uh, the fourth point SS12, etc. So uh, the intuition here of this approach is that the, the points that gets high, uh, uh, that gets uh, ranked higher, but every individual algorithm has the highest chance to appear uh, uh, on the top of our final ranking. So uh, when you follow the red path here, every time you encounter a point, you add it into uh, a vector actually. Uh, which is uh, then used as the final vector or as the final ranking of our scores. Uh, now, the second approach is uh, relatively simpler and it performs a cumulative sum. Uh, so uh, we have multiple algorithms that try to predict um, the score of every uh, data point. Then for every data point here, we just aggregate the scores uh, predicted by all the algorithms. So as you can see here in this uh, uh, algorithm on the left, uh, for data point i, we just take the sum of all the score by all the other algorithms. And this will be the final score for the data point. And then based on this score, actually, uh, we will rank the point, uh, uh, and then we will rank the points according to this score. Okay, so, uh, I don't know whether you have any question about those approach, maybe the breathe first approach or any other. Yeah, just uh, let me know if there is anything. I think the approach itself is very uh, simple and intuitive, uh, but if there is anything unclear, just uh, feel free to ask me. So now experiments. So the first experiment um, is performed on some synthetic data sets. Um, so here, um, uh, the picture actually shows uh, the projection of data into a two-dimensional space. So just a few words on how they created these data sets. So it's a data set that consists of uh, 5,000 normal data records and 100 data records, uh, which represent outliers, the red points. So what they did is just they generated the blue points uh, according to uh, some Gaussian distribution they are quite dense actually, then uh, they generated a number of 100 points which are quite spread and far from uh, the blue points uh, and the blue dense points. Now, originally the data uh, has five features, uh, but they also added five noisy features actually. And uh, now we will see why actually they considered these noise features. Okay, so the first result presented here as a rock curve um, represent actually the performance of the loaf, uh, of the loaf uh, method, which has been applied on the five original features. Uh, so um, uh, remember that we have five features which are actually used to uh, define the outliers and the normal data, and then uh, the authors added uh, five noisy feature. It means like features that do not help us to identify which data points is an outlier. Uh, so then um, we observe here that when we apply the loop on the five original features, we obtain actually uh, the best performance uh, as uh, illustrated by the, the rock curve here. But when we add uh, noisy features, then actually the performance of loop drops actually and quite significantly which is represented by the red uh, dots here in the curve, uh, while uh, uh, 
the, the, the approach proposed by the authors that uses uh, feature bagging is actually more robust uh, to the presence of um, uh, noisy features. Okay, so the second experiment actually was just to uh, try to increase the number of noisy features and see how it affects the performance of uh, different approaches. Uh, so it seems like um, it seems like the, the the different algorithms actually the behavior is still the same. Like the more the more noise feature we have, the worse uh, the single loop method gets, and um, uh, the more robust is uh, uh, the feature bagging approaches. Uh, now, interestingly, we see here that the cumul the, the cumulative sum is actually uh, better here and uh, uh, then the brief first approach and uh, one intuition is that the cumulative sum approach actually takes into account all the scores from the individual models that have been used to uh, decide or to vote on whether this point is an outlier or not uh, where is the brief first approach is actually um, at every uh, uh, at every um, every time it decides which um, uh, points to put in a particular ranking, it takes into account only one algorithm at a time. But we see that as we have more noisy features, uh, it's actually uh, likely that uh, for uh, one of our subsamples, uh, the results may not be good as we may be uh, ending sampling only uh, noisy features. So. Uh, the idea here is that the individual algorithms that we apply on every subsample may not be uh, always good, actually, or, or may not always give accurate uh, estimation of the outlier score. So this is why it may explain actually why taking into account all uh, the models in the cumulative sum approach to make a decision is actually uh, slightly better. Okay, so the second uh, experiment was on, on another synthetic data set, which contains 5,000 records, 50 outliers, and eight, eight features. And all of them are important, actually. We don't have noisy features here. So the, the purpose here was to see, actually, uh, whether the brief first approach and uh, or the feature bagging approach uh, under, the, under the two methods, brief first and cumulative sum, actually, uh, can still be competed to the loof approach, and it seems like uh, the performance are quite comparable, even though in the feature bagging approach, we don't look at all the feature uh, 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 at a time, actually. Every time we just uh, work on a subspace, actually. Okay. Then experiments on uh, real life data sets. Um, so the authors considered a lot of data sets. Uh, some of them actually uh, may not be initially a data set created for the anomaly detection case, but the way they have proceeded actually, uh, they mainly uh, took data sets for which we have uh, labels class, uh, uh, for which we know the class of each object. And then the way they tried to create all those data sets for the setting is by, for example, uh, grouping together uh, some classes and treating the smallest uh, class as uh, the outlier uh, class, for example, and so on. So they had done a lot of comparisons. And this is why sometimes you would see average here. It means average, it means like they have created uh, multiple scenarios with these data sets where uh, some classes are considered as outliers and some as normal. Uh, they run the experiment and in the end, they just average uh, the performance uh, over all uh, these possible scenarios. Uh, so as we observe here again, uh, it seems like um, uh, the feature bagging approach uh, really improves over uh, the single loaf approach in most of the time, even though like for specific for some specific cases, the results or the performance are very tight actually. Um, so the the argument of the author was like um, when trying or uh, running the experiment on this uh, data set is that um, even though we observed on the synthetic data set number two that uh, the loof approach actually may be better when all feature imp importance, they argue that on on real life data sets uh, it's actually 
uh, not always the case, and it's hard like to have uh, real world data sets where all, all the features or every single feature uh, is important. Okay, now finally, uh, we have some results on uh, the KDD Cup data set. Uh, this time, this is a data set uh, which has been created for uh, an anomaly detection competition. And uh, the task here, uh, or the data set, is about detecting uh, network intrusions. Uh, so the data set contains a number, the records are, uh, uh, are a number of uh, uh, network uh, connections, actually, and the idea with uh, different features. And the idea is to find uh, which of those um, uh, uh, which of those records actually represent network uh, intrusions. Uh, so here we observe clearly that um, the feature bagging methods uh, leads to significant improvement, actually, as opposed to uh, using the single loaf approach. Um, now, one possible explanation is probably because um, in this data set, only a few features actually may uh, allow to detect um, uh, that some intrusions actually may be uh, uh, anomalies. Uh, 